But first, let's talk about GameStop, the earnings there. And so far, we could maybe call them the lack of earnings, Caroline, because <laughs> second quarter net sales, they do come in better at $1.18 billion versus estimates of $1.12 billion. But you have a share price here that's off about 2.6% because of a second quarter adjusted loss per share of $0.76. Cents, and that was a little bit wider than what analysts were looking at at maybe a loss per share of 67 cents. So all in all, perhaps maybe, uh, maybe a bit of a disappointment. I want to do this all, though, with Bloomberg's Bailey Lipschultz, who's been covering GameStop, covering meme stocks. And Bailey, maybe some of the disappointment is I scour the press release, but it's one page long, and we don't yet get an update on really the turnaround of the business. Exactly, Taylor. It's pretty much a bare bones release, as you said, overall mixed results. But the one quote that stuck out to me was, that the company said they invested in the long-term growth initiatives that include expanding their product catalog. That's something we've heard them talk about since March. So the real focus will be what happens on this call. Will they take analyst questions? And will the new CEO um, who comes over from Amazon be able to drive home a message that they are changing what's going on at GameStop and they are bringing it to compete with e-commerce um, competitors like Amazon.com. Yeah, it's still an interesting uh, press release, an interesting earnings statement for a company with a $15 billion <laughs> uh, market cap. I, I am curious here, though, Bailey. I mean, we've heard from uh, both uh, the chairman of the company as well as other companies that sort of fell into beam stock status like AMC. This idea here that they're talking to a different sort of class of investors who maybe are focused a little bit more on narratives and dreams and don't really uh, get too bogged down in some of the nuts and bolts of, uh, you know, cash flow and things like that here. I'm wondering, is that still the case? Are people still trading this stock more based on sort of those hopes and dreams and less based on the nuts and bolts of those fundamentals? I think it is. I think if you look at retail flows, we haven't really seen much selling of GameStop. We've seen a little bit of buying from the retail side. But the main drivers um, as of late have been your traditional Wall Street pros, those hedge funds. But the retail base still has bought into that buy and hold mentality. But to your point, one of my favorite quotes that I saw uh, quickly after results came from Vital Knowledge. They said the stock is 90 percent psychology slash momentum and 10 percent fundamentals. And that's really wow. exactly what's happening with this stock. And if you look at the 900 plus returns that we've seen this year. Talk to us about the fundamentals, though, because we were anticipating perhaps a, a push up higher from console sales. But inherently, this is a company that's facing, well, gaming, going streaming, going online, going off, purchasing games in the way that you used to. Exactly. It's a business model that has shifted towards if you have a new PlayStation or if you have a new Xbox, you're downloading the games and content directly to your system. The one thing that the company has been trying to message to is that they're going to broaden their offerings across PC gaming, across computers. They're going to include monitors, gaming tables, mobile gaming, and bring, trying to bring gaming to TVs and directly. So it's going to be an interesting kind of uh, dance that the company is going to have to make to continue to advance this idea, this theory that they're going to come into the 21st century, come into a very uh, stream-heavy ecosystem that is gaming, as opposed to when it was really um, kind of in the heyday where you would go there to buy the latest and greatest Madden or FIFA or whatever video game.